I'll pop in. I see Americanos. No, nine, nine, nine. You shot the last one. I get this one. <laughs> Actually, he's American. I shouldn't shoot him. A lot of my viewership's American. Well, what about the British? Ooh, Hans, that's a good idea. I'm okay with. Mm, well, I don't know if I should shoot the Brits. There's a lot of British viewership as well. What about the Soviets? Ah, Hans, that's a bingo. <laughs> no one feels bad about killing commies. <laughs> Do you see how that one fell, Hans? <laughs> Too easy. That's how we would say a turkey shoots in Bavaria. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking SS Camo. Today we're going over a particularly fun gun, gonna be the Gewehr 43. But before we go any further, Joan, I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this, drinking your coffee, eating your beer. I need you to make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you don't do this, then I self implode. Also, Patreon, check out merchandise. This also helps out the channel greatly. So, big thank you there. Now, this Gewehr 43. Uh, it, <sighs> This is something that I've always wanted to have on the channel. And sadly, these things get kind of pricey. They get kind of expensive. This thing is a very cool piece to have on the channel. And so because he brought it on the channel, he gets to say whatever he wants for a quick second. Jordan, get over here. All right, so since you brought a Gewehr 43 on the channel, what would you like to tell my audience? Remember kids, get out and shoot trash. All right, you heard it from Jordan himself. All right, be free. POV, you are a Jim. There's probably a very slim chance this video actually gets monetized. I'm hoping, but big thank you to Arms Directory for being one of the sponsors of this particular video. Very happy to have them here on the channel. Acceptance of what's going on uh, here. Ah, uh, geez. So go check out Arms Directory. They are a pro Second Amendment social media site. Get back to what social media used to be back in the heyday for gun culture with our barter system that we used to have. They are a protected site. Go check them out, let them know I sent you. Maybe follow the link down below. Now, gentlemen, the Gewehr 43, like I was saying, is an iconic piece of German history. A little bit on the dark side, but um, you know, at that point in time, every nation has their sins against humanity. Politics aside, I'm a dude wearing on the internet wearing a ball club, so I don't want to get too political. But nonetheless, the Germans have a really good knack for making high quality firearms. Now, the question is, is this one as high quality as you may think? Uh, yes and no. Truthfully, this gun has things about it that shine, mainly it having a 10 round detachable box magazine and it being semi-automatic. For the Germans, this is a pretty big deal. But outside of that, I'd say the quality is not that crazy impressive, even though it still like has that German touch of excellence. Let's dive into it. Now, on YouTube, there's a plethora of other YouTubers that have gone over this gun, but the thing is, it hasn't been a YouTuber in recent years that has kind of gone over it again. But I will say there are guys that have done a good job like Mac, Forgotten Weapons, Hickok45. They kind of touch on the brief history of it, and there are some also smaller channels, shout out to those guys, but they dive into it a little bit more deeper, and they get very into the weeds of the Gewehr 43. They will all say there's the one that came before it, which is the Gewehr 41, which had the entrapped gas system at the end of the barrel. That was pretty bulky and got next aid, and then they moved to this system that tap directly into the barrel. Everyone always talks about this being stolen from the SVT-40, where it's like, hey, if they got a cool design, I might as well steal it. One thing I noticed off the bat when shooting the Gewehr 43 is that it was extremely gassed. And from what I saw in the researching that I did, it was so it could fight on the cold Russian front, or I should say the Eastern front fighting against the Russians where it gets rather cold. Now, I thought that was rather interesting because the recoil on this for the size of the gun that it is was actually pretty stout. I noticed like me being a bigger, like a biggish dude, and I usually can handle recoil firearms pretty well, I noticed that this actually was like 
rocking me a little bit, but not like, not like a lot. Like I'm trying to say like, it's more than I thought it would be is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't terrible. Admin, what are you doing, man? First off, keep your voice down. Now, looking at this gun, I will say it does one thing and it does one thing very well. It is freaking aesthetic. And I know I say that about a lot of guns I have on the channel. I think I just have a knack of finding aesthetic guns, but this gun is no exception. I will say it is kind of goofy. Well, not goofy, but I will say it's kind of interesting looking at some of these components and how rough they are. I saw other people talk about that, uh, how they expedited the process during the war because Germany has this huge need to get these firearms to the front to help make a difference wherever they can because they're losing the war at this point. They're not polishing, they're not taking the time to refine a lot of the external parts of this receiver so you get this really rough finish, which I thought is pretty neat. So you want to come here and check this out so you can really see how rough that is. And it's very like porous and guys were even talking about how it helped retain oil and keeping the gun going a little bit longer. But I, you know, I don't have that much time behind it, so I can't say or speak to that. Now we've got our 10 round detachable box magazine holding eight millimeter Mauser. That in itself is pretty terrifying and pretty cool. And this gun is also going to have the, the uh, Waffen Eagle marks on there. Really cool little thing about history. Kind of spooky, maybe a little haunted, but I can't speak to that here or there. It might be hard to see on this camera but uh, definitely very interesting. So we got a G43. A lot of times guys talk about this being called the Gewehr 43 or the, or the K43 for carabiner. But I think a lot of people know it as the Gewehr 43 from video games mainly. I recognize this a lot from video games growing up. You know, there's a plethora of World War II games, Call of Duty being a very popular one, but later in years, you know, even into adulthood playing like Hell Let Loose, seeing this gun. Really interesting because it kind of gets you to be put in the shoes, at least in Hell Let Loose, a more realistic first person shooter where you get to kind of see how this was been a big deal to the German army. In a world of K98s, in a world of bolt action guns, the man who has a semi-auto rifle is king. It's like, that's what it kind of feels like. So having one of these can make a huge difference. And it's really cool seeing these, but I mean, they weren't as widely used as they would have been, you know, say in like Battlefield 5, or every Smo Joe might have one of these, especially equipped with an optic. So of like the millions of car 98s made during World War II, I think I saw a fraction of that is, is a very small number. I think estimated around 500,000 of these made which in that scale of a war is not a lot and these were very highly sought after spoiler alert, i didn't fight in world war ii and i especially didn't fight the russians in world war ii as a german so i did read a story of a memoir of a german soldier who was fighting on the eastern front and one interesting detail about the story is that he had eight millimeter exploding ammo eight millimeter exploding ammo is definitely a geneva convention no-no but the germans fighting the russians they, i mean to be fair them fighting each other probably did not give a damn about that but he had eight millimeter exploding ammo and so they are given this kind of suicide mission where they had to go take on a larger force of dug-in russians and the attack initially started off bad but once he kind of got his bearings, he had a four times optic on a Gewehr 43 with eight millimeter exploding rounds. And he, once he got the angle and the drop on these Russians, he just essentially started destroying them. And they ended up winning the engagement against a superior number after already losing, I think, about 10 guys off the bat. So a really interesting example for the time period of how a semi-automatic weapon with a magnified optic is a huge force multiplier. As while this may seem like a no-brainer today, what you realize is that that era is 80 to like 83 years ago or 80 some years ago, and you go back to them where they have 80 years before in 1940, it's like the Civil War era. So it's huge leaps of weapons tech, and even now it's like we have this crazy weapons technology compared to what they had. So it'll always be interesting to look forward to the future in 80 years seeing what our grandkids and their laser rifles they're gonna be fighting with. But I'm more gaming. Let's <laughs> now as I was saying, the Gewehr 43 would have been a huge force multiplier for your average German infantry. So let's actually do a little experiment. Paul, get over here. I mean Hans, get over here. Hans has a shot timer. So what we're gonna do, he's gonna time me as I run through the Car 98 versus Gewehr 43. And then just for a little bit of fun, we'll compare the Gewehr 43 to the M1 Garand. So let's do that. We'll start with the Car 98. All right, so real quick, we're just gonna go for as fast as I can, not accuracy, so just for the fun of it, a little example. All right, Paul, or I mean Hans, whenever you're ready. Stand by. All right, so just five rounds, what was the time? 689. 689 to empty five rounds, no reload. Rounds, 5.44. Nine rounds, 5.44. One malfunction, but that's okay. M1 Garand, 30-06. Nope. Malfunction. That's a bad one. P1 
POV, you are a kraut. M1 Grand was a little sick. Turns out all she needed was some lube. <laughs> Story of my life. But if I needed to find out more, I could have used TestLong. TestLong is a bore sight tool, essentially a camera that allows you to inspect the bore of your barrel. These guys that made it are probably about 10 to 69 times more intelligent than a guy like myself. So big thank you for them to wanting to support the channel. Get out there, check them out. I think I'm definitely gonna use them for sure when it comes time for a little black powder episode. All right, so uh, M1 Grand, a little sick. I'm not sure what's going on. You gotta get that figured out. Big bummer. But Hans, you are relieved of duty. Off Wiedersehen, see you later. I always love shooting old guns, like I said before. It is kind of like when you, when you get to take this kind of stuff and you're wearing, you know, I look kind of goofy in the whole kit, but when you're wearing it, you get that little connection to history. It's definitely a dark part of history because if anywhere during the, like a war, I think the Ost Front would be one of the most scary places to be because it's literally a war of annihilation coupled with ideology, so. Would want to avoid that one, but um, I mean, hey, if I had to be there, I definitely wouldn't mind having a Gewehr 43 that was a very high quality build. But from what I heard in the research, they talked about these being made in concentration camps, so you never know if you might get one that's a little bit sabotaged or kind of iffy, so yeah, you might take your chances there. A lot of things that's always talked about amongst people when they see this gun is like, wow, if they would have had more of these, the Germans probably could have won the war. And it's like, eh, you know, it's, you know, rifles are important for fighting because it's like it boils down to a very kinetic part. But I mean, logistics is like how you win wars. So a lot of the Germans still had horse-drawn carriages. And it's like, what are you doing, man? The America's showing up with Ford and General Motors and all this crazy stuff. And that's logistics are winning the war. I mean, the Germans at that point, they're kind of like the hype beasts of World War II. What we have in modern gun culture where guys are all focused about having the coolest, latest camo, guns, and gear. The, the hype beasts of World War II were kind of like the same way. They had the cool guns. They had the hype beast camo. Camo. They had, I mean, they had cool vehicles like jets, but maybe the aliens were helping them. I digress. I'm, I'm diving into a deep rabbit hole there. All in all, I would say the Gewehr 43, a very cool rifle. I think at the point of the war it was introduced, it was already too late to make a big difference. If every German soldier started off with it, I think the Germans could have had a better chance, but ultimately I don't think they could have held out on their own, considering that yet again, for the second time, the Germans were taking on the world. Literally a people that are like, hey, one wasn't enough, so we're going to do it twice. A little Norm MacDonald joke for you. Gotta appreciate our German fighting spirit. So hey, hats off to those sauerkrauts. Well, gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Gewehr 43 make sure you like and subscribe leave a comment in the comment section down below it's always fun showing off really cool historical pieces as this because they're pretty rare and they're not floating around there as much so big thank you for stopping by as always gentlemen stay easy stay breezy i'll catch you on the flip monday <laughs> Here, stay, uh, can you do a walk towards us? <laughs> hey, ready? Now there's someone that... <laughs> oh, we're not shooting, we're just chilling. I just can't hear, sorry. Uh, let's go into the bushes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Tap me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh. I see an Americano. Here, sorry, go back, go back. Are you going hot? Mein Gottsmann.